Hey there guys. So um, got two questions. One of them was overhead press um, and how to break through training plateaus. So just being stuck. Um, and the other one was how do I program for bench press? So I'll start with the overhead shoulder press. For me, if I get stuck on anything, you know, overhead or even bench press, try and have a look at your weaknesses. So for overhead press, typically if it's standing, um, a lot of people are going to be quite weak through their abs and lower back and they're going to find stabilizing themselves under load um, one of the more difficult challenges. So what I'd suggest is probably press the weight overhead and just you know keep it at lockout above your head and just get used to you know spending a bit of time under tension. Sort of feel where your weaknesses are and sort of almost hold it above your head to the point of failure. And you'll find out if it's really your shoulders, your tricep, or more your mid to lower back um, area. For a lot of people, it's going to be the mid to lower back. So simply, you know, just doing static holds in that regard is going to help improve your overhead press. Dumbbell overhead press being seated or anything like that, um, that's going to be a different story because, you know, your lower back isn't going to be the weak link that gives out. It's going to be more shoulders and triceps. So same thing holds true. So if you're doing the overhead press and you find it's in your shoulders and triceps, well then your weakness quite literally is your shoulders and triceps. In terms of sets and reps, you know, whatever you've been doing, if you've been doing sets of 10, maybe drop it down to sets of six to eight. If you've been doing, you know, reps at, you know, the six to eight mark, maybe go up towards the 10 rep mark, just change what you're doing. Um, and you know, you might do that for five, six weeks and then revert back to what you were previously doing for five to six weeks. So use that as a tool to sort of, you know, kickstart your progress again. Um, and same thing would hold true with the bench press. For me, in terms of how do I program, it's a little bit different because of where I am at at my stage of lifting. But for me, I typically just, I'm trying to work towards two sets of 10 because for me, whatever I hit, I basically add a third and that gives me a projected one RM, providing I get the two sets of 10. So, um, and then from there, so I've got 180 for 10s, that gives me 240 for a single. So then it would be about me slowly increasing the weight and dropping the reps and each week, you know, working up towards the 240 kilo mark. You know, going from 10s to singles isn't going to work great if you just do it in a very short time period, aka one to two weeks. It takes a bit of time just to get used to holding the weight again in your hands, really getting your central nervous system to fire up and respond accordingly. Um, in terms of overall programming, I'd probably spend eight to 10 weeks at the hypertrophy range because this is more an off season. Originally, you know, there were going to be competitions, but I'm still in lockdown here in Australia. So um, it's just continue to build the foundations. And once I've got my two sets of 10, then my front squat's where I want. Um, I'm going to, you know, have a decent deload. I'm gonna go more with a fitness style of programming because I wanna try and drop my body fat levels down. Because, you know, if you drop your body fat levels down, you maximize your natural, you know, testosterone, you drop estrogen levels in your body because estrogen and body fat go hand in hand. So I want to, you know, minimize that as much as possible. Um, and then just work on, I'm not going to necessarily say my cardiovascular ability, but just simple things like being able to run 2Ks in, say, 10 minutes. I don't really class that as cardio. I view it more as conditioning because I'm trying to condition myself so I can perform my training better. It also gives me the ability to recover faster and better. So if I'm recovering quicker and the quality of my recovery is superior, it just means that you know overall as an athlete, I'm gonna progress faster. It also allows me to, in the off season, work on a little bit more of mobility, um, have a little bit of a different style of training. You know, if I had any soft tissue injuries, I've given them time then to heal, especially say for instance with individuals in lower back, like, you know, going from 180 and then just dropping the weight significantly and going for more of the 10 reps, um, my lower back, everything else, if there was anything underlying, well, hey, it's gonna get a really good chance to recover. Typically conditioning for me will be six to eight weeks, sometimes longer, especially if I have no idea what the go is with um, competitions. Um, 
The conditioning aspect, again, you know, that's obviously going to help with your lifts progressing. If you're recovering adequately between your sessions, you're going to progress more. Also have a look at your overall nutrition, especially in terms of calories. You want, if you're trying to get stronger or bigger, a calorie surplus, you know, is basically key. You're going to have a really good program, but as soon as you start eating well and eating more, your progress, you know, it just goes north. You could have, by the same measure, you know, quite a poor program, but eat, you know, heavy calorie surplus, and you're still going to get quite good results. Eating is so underrated. Like, so many people miss the point. If you're just eating at maintenance, you're going to find it's very hard for your body to grow, and you're just going to slowly recomp. And for me, that's not ideal. I, I find that too hard to do. I'd rather eat a bit in calorie surplus, make really good quality strength gains, maintain it there and then have a dedicated conditioning thing where I'm not trying to chase imaginary numbers. It doesn't matter if the weight on the bar or dumbbells temporarily, you know, decreases. My goal is therefore, you know, conditioning and fitness and the ability to maximize testosterone levels and the ability to recover. That is how you set yourself up for long-term success. At the same measure, you're not going to go ahead and do something crazy like eating a thousand calorie surplus and, you know, bulk for like six months. Um, that's not really a great way of going about it. Um, I've done something similar in the past, but not thousand calorie surplus. I just found, you know, if I have set blocks, you know, eight to 12 weeks of trying to achieve a certain goal, that works really well. At the same time, at the end of that eight to 12 weeks, if you pay attention to your training, and look back over it, you will see the things that work well for you and the things that don't work. There's no point in spending six months doing a routine that doesn't deliver, you know, optimal results. Um, some people have found, you know, going heavy for three to four weeks works well, and then they go lighter for three to four weeks. It's whatever works well for the individual. But for me, I found, you know, having quality blocks of training makes a big difference. And that will hold especially true if you've got like a young family like I do. It's very easy then to just dedicate eight weeks or 10 weeks of training really hard and then know that, you know, eight to 12 weeks of sort of lesser, more conditioning style training is going to, you know, give you the ability to spend more time with your family. Um, you don't feel, I'm not going to say greedy in terms of putting all the effort into training and then neglecting the family because that's not the case. It's just your mindset changes a lot. It's much easier to focus on one thing at a time and then, you know, sort of switch off to an extent um, and then enjoy the, the time with your family or whatever else you need to do. Especially, you know, if you're doing shift work or other things, you need to find that work-life balance because that's going to enable you to stick with the sport and progress long-term, which is also going to help you break through quite a few of your, your plateaus and barriers that you're going to come against. And you're going to find that you're always going to have a, it's a constant game of changing and finding what works for you. I've had to adjust my training so many times over the years. You know, I've done the five by five um, that worked well, then it stopped working. Four sets of 10 worked really well for a period of time. Then I had to drop it to two sets of 10. I've done things like squat every day. Um, I've tried many different programs, at different variations and stages of my lifting career. Um, and I found what does work really well. I found once I got to a certain point of strength, five by five, you know, that, that I can't do that. It's too damaging. Um, four sets of 10 works really well for volume and hypertrophy. And then the two sets of 10, I can use a heavier weight again. Um, and I don't find it too taxing on any of my joints or, you know, soft tissue. I can move around comfortably. I'm never really sore in terms of, you know, still get DOMS and the rest of it but I can live a normal life. You know, I don't have to think twice, you know, if I want to play soccer with my son or if I want to go kick the footy or, you know, just anything like that. I don't have to think twice about it because I can just do it. Um, that's probably it in terms of advice. Just, yeah, as I said, have a look at your weaknesses, find what's weak for you, What find what works, really pay attention to your training, um, make sure you keep a track of your assistant exercises and what you're doing, sets, reps, volume, and then look back over eight weeks or 10 weeks and see if you're making any significant progress. If you're not, completely change your program and see how you uh, progress or don't. It's finding what really does work for you because at the end of the day, everyone's going to recover differently, sleeps, you know, everyone gets more or less sleep than the other person. Um, diet plays a huge one. 
you know, different, even different limb lengths for certain things. Like some people can recover really well from deadlifts because they're just built for it. And other people do deadlifts and they're sore for two weeks. So it's also, you know, finding the exercises that you're good at and you enjoy um, and progressing with those as well, providing they're relevant to your overall goals. Um, if you guys haven't already, hit like and subscribe. If you have any further questions, let me know. Otherwise, um, have a great day wherever you are.